I've always personally thought that one of the most ridiculous and idiotic notions that people have are that you shouldn't say bad things about the dead. Like, that's just totally idiotic to me. I'm sorry it is. If it is true, and it is an accurate representation of who that person was when they were alive, that's not bad-mouthing them, even though they're dead. That's just like telling the truth about them. And it's so often the case when we talk about people in general, but especially famous people, celebrities, athletes, entertainers, musicians, etc., politicians, like, you can't just use one broad brush to paint over everything in their life. It's because humans by nature are very complex, intricate creatures and very flawed at that. And I'm sure if a lot of people looked into a lot of our lives, they would probably find as many ugly or potentially detestable things, depending upon the perspective, as they would like the good or the positive. So I, I, that brings me to somebody like New Jack. And the news that came out yesterday of his passing, I believe in North Carolina, due to a heart attack at the age of 58. And, and this is somebody that, when you talk about him, it can evoke a lot of emotions. And the reality is, is he was a complex individual. Certainly flawed. Certainly did some bad and frankly detestable things. And certainly also was a very important figure in the history of professional wrestling. Was certainly an important figure at one of the hottest and arguably you would say clearly the hottest period overall in North American professional wrestling. The whole Attitude Era, Monday Night Wars, ECW era of the mid to late 90s. Now you say a lot of things about New Jack, and many of them, good and bad, can both be true. But there is no doubting the fact that he's a legend. There is no disputing the fact that he is a hardcore wrestling icon. There is no disputing the fact that he had a mark that he left on the wrestling business. He made an impact. He made a legacy. And it can be challenging for me to look back at somebody like New Jack, who admittedly I was a fan of over the years, and not just kind of ball wash all the good things that I enjoyed about him and you know how he entertained me and this and that and ignore some of the bad things. Like I can't do that either, but it, it's tough. I'm trying to give a fair balanced representation of the man. Because I will tell you as a performer, like I frankly wish we had more New Jacks. I frankly wish we had more people that were willing to toe the line and blur the line to the point of where you didn't know where New Jack began and Jerome Young ended, or Jerome Young began and New Jack ended. In many ways, he was his gimmick, he lived his gimmick, he became his gimmick, and, and he was something that we do not see. Let's be clear, we absolutely do not see in professional wrestling anymore. He was somebody that you could look at and you could believe in him. You thought he was crazy. You thought he was off of his fucking rocker. You thought he was a badass dude. You thought he was unstable. You thought he was reckless. You thought all these things because he frankly was. Like that's who he was. That's who Jerome Young was. That's how he lived his life. That's how New Jack was. And that's how he lived his life. And that's how he wrestled. And he performed as an entertainer, as a wrestler, over decades. There is a big piece of me, like, I don't want to gloss over the fact that one of the things I always respected about him was that he was comfortable with towing the line and oftentimes crossing over it and stepping over it. He lived in a place, he lived in a world where he wanted heat. He sought it out. He actively went after it. You can look back on some of the old Smoky Mountain shit alone. <laughs> a shout out to my good friend OJ. He got two less to worry about. Hot damn, New Jack. There you go. <laughs> like, he actively went out there and tried to piss people off. He actively sought out that heat. He was not afraid of going against the grain and shaking up the mold and 
redefining wrestling in his world, in his image, and in his likeness. And he had a hell of a run, and he made a go of it. And he certainly has left a mark and a legacy on professional wrestling. And even when you get to the shoot interviews, like, you know, when you think about those people that you look at and you say, these are the wrestling shoot interview icons. It's the freaking New Jacks of the world. It's the Iron Sheiks of the world, baby. The Honky Tonk Man's like, He's on that Mount Rushmore of wrestling shoot interviews. He really is. Which helped, I think, add shelf life to him and kind of build upon his legacy a little bit. But, but like I said, there, there is no question that this was a significant figure in the history of ECW, a significant figure in the realm and world of hardcore wrestling, a significant figure in professional wrestling as a whole. Do I, in some ways, wish that he, during the real height of WCW and WWF, that he would have been able to have some type of run that the powers that be in those companies would have been able to trust him enough to put him in a spot where they could put him on national television and you know, be able to let him go? Yeah, I wish they could have. I totally understand why they didn't. And, you know, in some way, some of New Jack's biggest strengths ultimately were also his biggest weaknesses and his biggest obstacles and his biggest challenges. Because he could go off the cuff. Because he could go to places that others couldn't. Because he did embrace getting heat. And he lived for it and he loved it. Because he would be unpredictable. He would be off the wall. Because you could actually believe in that this dude was crazy and off of his rocker. Like, of course, these other major national companies were not going to trust him. Nor should they have. So his greatest strength in some ways became his biggest weakness. And there will also be, I'm certain, a lot of people that will focus on some of the things in terms of the mass transit incident. They will talk about that. They will talk about the Vic Grimes incident. They will talk about the Gypsy Joe incident and some of the other things that have happened over the years. I'm forgetting the name of the dude down in Florida as another example of that. And yeah, like looking back on some of that crap, you could obviously sit there and say like, that was stupid. That was uncalled for. And you can't really just use this spin and excuse of, well, that's just wrestling in the way it used to be. Because no, at some point in time, a motherfucker has to learn how to handle themselves and control themselves. And he would get out there and frankly, sometimes I think act like a snowflake and get pissed off about the stupidest, littlest, most insignificant things and try to sit there and just go to town on people. Like sitting there and throwing Vic Grimes off the top of a 30 plus foot high scaffold with the thought of, damn, I missed when he actually hits the tables kind of in the ring. And you know, when he sits there and he's beating up almost a 70 year old man, like these are not the things that we should be praising. These are not the things that we should be talking about in a glowing light because they're not funny. Might chuckle about him a little bit just in terms of <laughs> that was new Jack being a jackass because he was and he absolutely could be. You know, and you, some of you might point out like the relationship with one of his children and kind of saying some transphobic, so transphobic and homophobic things and talking about the fact, well, just because he came up from a certain generation in time doesn't make that okay. You're absolutely right about that too. Like, how, 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 do, you, how do you compartmentalize all of this and how do you handle this? Like, the, it's a complicated legacy to talk about. Like I talked about it a few months back with Pat Patterson's passing, like, he leaves both a great and very complicated legacy. And he absolutely does. Both can be true and both are true. And it's important to not just paint this glowing picture of the, the human, the man, the individual and ignore the negatives. And you shouldn't just solely focus only on the negatives, which, you know, we're humans by nature. Some of us gravitate towards that. A lot of people gravitate towards that. And they'll say, well, cancel him or fuck him or rot in hell, blah, 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 blah. And the reality is, is this much more complicated than that? So yes, in some ways, New Jack didn't know how to control himself. He was a drug abuser. He abused some of his opponents in the ring, took liberties with them. And, you know, that kind of breaks a cardinal rule of professional wrestling. Like you have to protect yourself, but you also have to protect your opponents because it's a dance and that's your partner. And he blurred that line on several occasions and with some dangerous, disastrous results for those that were caught up in the crossfire. You know, here was a guy that was unpredictable, and that sometimes was his greatest asset, and again, was also his greatest liability. This is a guy that was also, to me, 
one of the great talkers of the 1990s in professional wrestling beyond a shadow of a doubt. Like, there aren't that many people that could talk about wrestling in a way like New Jack could and generate the type of heat that he could when he opened his mouth. He's truly one of the great talkers of that time period in wrestling, in a period that was loaded with them. He takes a back seat to very few. And he brought, you know, he was perfectly suited for that ECW kind of physical style, that extreme hardcore, this is more of a brawl in a street fight than it is pure wrestling match. He was perfect for that. But he was also a guy that, you know, sometimes was his own worst enemy and couldn't get out of his own fucking way and sometimes was just an idiot. And sometimes that was drug related and sometimes that's just being an idiot. And he was all of that and more. But he was also somebody that I look at him and I say, damn it, like that's a professional wrestler. The good, the flaws, and all of it. And I mean it when I say like, when you look at a dude like New Jack, you never really knew what the fuck he was thinking or what the hell he was going to do. And there was an appeal to that. But what you did know is that whatever he did, you knew it could blur the line to the point that you could suspend your disbelief, even if you were the smartest of marks. And even for the boys and gals in wrestling, like you didn't know whether this is work or whether this is shoot. And it's a tragedy to me, to me, that I look at somebody like a New Jack because of that history of towing the line, crossing over it sometimes, and going too far and doing really dumb, ignorant, idiotic things, that some of that other piece, some of that real good that we could so badly, desperately use in professional wrestling today gets overlooked. Because he could talk. He fit that style of wrestling in that time period so perfectly, so beautifully. He can make you suspend your disbelief. And think about how few wrestlers can actually legitimately do that today. All the choreographic gymnastics, um, fucking karate crap. Like, here's a dude that you thought he was liable to murder somebody in the ring. And there were a couple of times over the years where you felt like he damn near did. He almost did. And I, I, I guess in some ways, yes, as an older older fan now, like I long for those times, admittedly a little bit, where I could believe in some of the people that I see. And this is not to me to sit there and say that New Jack was a man and this is machismo and manhood and all that. Because no, some of the stuff that he did was frankly bitch-like. It really was. But... We, we could use some of those elements in wrestling now. And I think like his legacy is complicated as it is for a lot of people. And his is certainly no different. For some of you, you're going to watch this and be mad that I talked about some of the negative aspects. And I totally understand that. Some of you are going to be mad that I talked about any of the positive aspects. Again, understand that. It doesn't fucking matter to me. Like, we got to talk all about all of it. Because he is a legend and he is an icon. In the grander scheme of the scope of professional wrestling, there's no question about it. 30 years from now, a lot of us will still be talking about New Jack related things. That, that much is absolutely true. He is a hardcore legend, a hardcore, hardcore icon. You cannot take that away from him. You can talk about some of those elements without celebrating some of the other elements. But you can't just bash all those other elements and not celebrate some of the things that he did bring to the table. Whether you want to say fuck him or not. But it's just yet another example of, in wrestling, one thing we're used to is seeing so many of these people die. Like, you almost become numb to it a little bit. And to me, like, this is another one of these wrestlers that, during his time, I did enjoy. I was absolutely a fan. And now he's gone. So it's like, yet again, another piece of my childhood and my teenage years is gone forever. And it makes you think, again, about your own mortality. Um... So yeah, New Jack's gone at the age of 58 and it feels like no matter what, in the realm of the internet wrestling world, we will never ever fully quite ever be the same again.